All right, come on, let's do it. Get along, Mildred, get along, Mildred. Pick up your window, your gun, and wobble low. Get along, Mildred, get along, Mildred. Put in your teeth and put on your wig. Yeah. Get along, Mildred, get along, Mildred. Put in your tea. Yeah. Put in your tea. Yeah, Mildred. 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 Oh, Mildred. Don't you worry about that wig. Don't worry about them teeth. Are you saved? Fritzy. Mildred. Is she, is she saved? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's not really saved. Mildred, if you're saved, leave the teeth in the glass. Throw the wig in the street, because when that trumpet sounds, and we go to be with our savior in the clouds, you're going to have a set of immortal choppers, and a head of hair that would put Absalom to shame. You got that? Woo! All right. You know what? I, it just got me to thinking. You know, Mildred putting her teeth in the glass, you know who's going to have the best set of teeth? In all of Yeshua's kingdom? George. That's right. Look at this. I'm going to show you something. Look at that contraption. Can you imagine you walking around with that thing sitting on your gums? Goodness gracious. And fighting the British at the same time. And you know what? Let me tell you what. That man, George Washington, greatest man of his day. Might have been the whole, the greatest man of, of the whole 18th century. He never complained. Never complained once about the pain he was in with that set of teeth or whatever that was. How do you know, Laban? How do you know he never complained, Bill? My little Polish friend, Shaul, he's read everything there is about George. I've read quite a bit myself in all of the biographies. They always tell how he would go off somewhere in secret with a dentist. <laughs> Can you imagine George Washington, you know, writing secret letters to dentists <laughs> in 1700s, you know, colonial America before we, before we was a country, you know. And, hey, you got to come look at my teeth. It had to be amazing, you know. And there is some correspondence, apparently, where, you know, he's writing to these secret dentists. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Well, you know, Daniel did say knowledge would increase. So, <laughs> about George's teeth, I'm not sure if that's in the book of Daniel anywhere, but hey. All right. What is this? What is this? How you doing, folks? Leib Shmuel here. Coming to you from FEMA region number three. Venus and Jupiter. I'm going to miss them. They're going down. Going down in the west, but they come back up in the east. In the morning. The end of August did that in a, in a previous video. You know, come to think about it, you know, talking about Mildred before, um, you might go back. Mildred was already mentioned in a video once before. This one here had something to do with radishes, I think. Um, go back and watch that one. It's, it's a little humorous one. Um, I forgot what it was about. Uh, come to think of it, what's this video going to be about? Hmm. Well, I think we're going to look at some scripture. That's for sure. We always got to look at the scriptures, other scriptures. And then, of course, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Jorge the False Prophet. I ain't talked much about Jorge of late. I don't like talking about him. He's an idiot. He's also the False Prophet. Yeah, yeah, well, I got something to show you about him. Now, what I want to do before I get into the scriptures... Oh. Oh, 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 the scriptures. Before we do that, I want to show you a couple of things from past videos. Let's do that right now. Ho, oh, oh, ho, here we go. Back in February, this past February of 2015, I produced two videos at the end of the month. One was called, What is this? Babel France. And the other was called, What is this? A seatbelt, a pill, a straitjacket, and a Vulcan. And one of the main topics of these videos was this. That's right. Live Earth 2015, Road to Paris. Now, what did we just find out recently? <coughs> this. You look how they got the word delayed up there. Delayed, my giggy. That was canceled. 
They went from, you know, all these hundreds of artists and whatever, 24-hour coverage and all this down to one concert. And nowhere in this entire article does it give you a, a reason for the delay. <laughs> Read what that says there below the headline. Get a load of this. Live Earth had announced shows on each inhabited continent for June 18th, featuring more than 100 artists to raise pressure for a strong agreement at a UN-led climate conference in Paris at the end of the year. Representatives, however, said Friday that no events would take place on June 18, and instead a free concert would be held near the Eiffel Tower in Paris sometime in the autumn. I guess uh, September, when all the hoopla is going to start, you know, with, uh, with, with the Jorge and all that at the UN and everything. Look at that. I mean, they go from this big build-up with Al Gore and Mr. Farrell and that other dude, you know, standing on the stage at the World Economic Forum and all that, and then all of a sudden, it's just canceled? Delayed? <laughs> I don't know. Something fishy about this. I'll leave a link to this article so you can check it out yourself. I speculated in an even more recent video that perhaps it was canceled because of Ramadan. The first day of Ramadan fell on the exact day that this thing was supposed to start, June 18, 2015. But then I got to thinking about something that I said in the straight jacket video. I'm going to play that for you right now. Listen to this. On June 18th, 2015, that day will mark the exact 200th anniversary of the Battle of <laughs> Waterloo. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, friends. I, I, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. Live Earth Road to Paris just happens to fall on the exact 200th anniversary of the most notorious battle in French history and the ruination of their, of him? I mean, Napoleon Bonaparte is considered, along with Adolf Hitler, as, as a precursor to Antichrist, as, as a type of Antichrist, for Pete's sakes. Man, what are the odds of this? I mean, the, the Battle of Waterloo was, was humiliating to France. I mean, could this, could this be a harbinger? You know, a harbinger of doom for this this climate summit that's meeting in Paris in in December of this year? Well, there you go, my friends. Back in February of this year, I posed the question. Is the Waterloo anniversary a harbinger? Hmm. Would something befall these events, that is, the Live Earth concerts and or this Paris Climate Change Conference? Those concerts did get the axe. We'll just have to see if it affects the uh, Climate Change Conference uh, starting in November into December, later this year. <laughs> Food for prophetic thought, my friends. Ho, ho. And now, my sign-watching bunkies, we're gonna move on to something I covered in the most previous video to the one you're seeing right now. Two celestial formations that will occur this coming August. Now, if you happen to view that video, I pointed out that to me, these two formations, both manifesting themselves in the constellation of Leo, or, or as it is called in the Hebrew zodiac, or Matzeroth, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and I hope we all know who that is. If you recall, I remarked in that video that to me, these two phenomenal formations are quite reminiscent of a very recognizable and iconic image. This one. <laughs> Friends, I posted that video on YouTube, the one that features these two celestial formations, on July the 3rd at about 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Daylight Time. Later that evening, July 3rd, later that evening, about 12 hours or so after I posted my video, the following photographs hit the Internet. <coughs> What do you think of that, Mr. Walt Disney? Hmm? <laughs> Let me tell you what I think. I think that our Elohim 
is about to remove his hand of protection from that place. That's right. Now, Mr. Volk, I do not know the state of your soul at the time of your death or your salvation, whether you were saved or what. But I'll say this. I pray for your eternal sake that you were not part of what your kingdom has become. <laughs> and how about the cancellation of Live Earth on June 18th? Do you think? Do you think the fact that it fell on the uh, 200th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo had anything to do with, uh, you know, was it a harbinger? I don't know. I just thought it was very interesting that it got canceled, you know. Then it fell on a very tragic day in French history. Who knows? We'll find out one day from Elohim. He'll tell us everything, everything. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Now, many of you think that this verse is just talking about like what people do in secret, you know, when people ain't looking. But I also believe that this verse means that Elohim will reveal everything he knows to us once we are with him in eternity. You know, he'll tell us how everything was made and why everything happened to be it did in our lives. That's right. I will even find out why my ancestors had to come to Baltimore. Ooh. All right, people, gird your loins. You know, I've been avoiding him. Haven't wanted to even give a thought to this evil waste of space. But the days are flying. And he's getting ready to perform his task. He's getting himself ready. Remember, my friends, Antichrist is not the only imposter. Not the only counterfeit. This, this thing, this thing you're looking at on the screen, this wolf, he will be to the beast what John the Baptist was to Yeshua. Just as John the Baptist announced Yeshua to the world, so will the false prophet, him, introduce the beast. Now, I want you to take a look at a headline that featured a statement that he made. Take a look at this. Now, I believe that he said this back in March. I could quit like Benedict or even die by 2017. Well, good for you. Let me tell you something, folks. It's pretty odd enough that he chose the year 2017. <laughs> that in itself is pretty bizarre. That, of course, uh, is the year that they say that everyone will have an RFID chip implanted, if it is an RFID chip, for the mark. And it's also the year of the phenomenal sign in the Shamaim, the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon at her feet, a crown of twelve stars at her head, and she is in labor. That takes place September 23rd, 2017. Something that he would mention that momentous year, or what I believe will be a momentous year, whether or not we are even here. And I do not believe we will be, by the way, so uh, take heart. But the first thing I thought of when I saw that statement was a particular scripture. This one right here. Kind of gives you a little bit of a chill, doesn't it? It did me. These words of John the Baptist. He must increase. He, meaning Yeshua, but I meaning himself, must decrease. Is this what this snake is getting at? With this, I could quit, I could die by 2017. He must decrease so that his God, the Antichrist, can fully take his power, his seat on the world scene. Remember this fellow here? I introduced you to him back in a little video I did uh, in March called Nimrod Rising. His name is Aaron Sharinian. Interesting hand gesture there, isn't it? <laughs> Let's say we refresh our memories on something he said in a little speech he gave at the United Nations. In September, new goals will be discussed. 
a new to-do list for our world. The world is coming together to decide priorities. Is that why he's coming to the new Tower of Babel, my friends? To tell the world its new priorities? Is this why he'll be rising to the podium on the 25th of September? Perhaps he'll be confirming the division of Yahweh's land with these many nations. And oh yes, there will be many nations on hand to hear him. Just as the nations were gathered with Nimrod at the tower in Genesis 11. At the time of Nimrod, there were 70 nations gathered at the Tower of Babel. 70. So is it not apropos then that these many nations gathered together this September will be celebrating the United Nations' 70th anniversary? And perhaps for this anniversary, they could also celebrate and ask him as they did John the Baptist. Are you the one we should follow? Or is there another coming after you? Perhaps that question will be asked this September. For as you know, my friends, from this podium, he goes off to another in Philadelphia, where he will say a mass for perhaps a million people. Take a look now at the place where he is most comfortable saying his mass, and now compare it to where he will be on the night of September the 27th, which is also the night of the final blood moon. Look at that, my friends. Look at the similarity in those two locations. Man, oh man. And St. Peter's there on the left. They call that the uh, Keyhole Piazza. And uh, to the right, that, of course, is Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Hmm. Keyhole Piazza in Pennsylvania, the uh, Keystone State. <laughs> Just a little more food. For prophetic thought, my brothers and sisters. All right, now we're going to take a look at some scriptures. What we're going to do after that, I don't know. Going to see what Elohim has in mind. Sometimes I just let it, let it flow. You know, let it flow. And let it go. And give it to the Elohim. That's right. So we're going to look at a, a piece of scripture. It's very important in Bible prophecy. Very important. After that, we're just going to let it go and let Elohim take it from there. So let's get on to the scriptures. Here they come. Here come the scriptures. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Fritzy, Paco, and Potato Boy. Brothers and sisters, we're going to take a look at a prophecy from the book of Isaiah. Yes, Yahoo. One that I've been thinking about quite a bit lately. So, let's get on with it. Isaiah, Yeshayahu, chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. Let's read together, my friends. See, Yahweh rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Mitzrayim. The idols of Mitzrayim tremble before him, and the hearts of the Mitzrites melt with fear. I will stir up Mitzrite against Mitzrite. Brother will fight against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. The Mitzrites will lose heart, and I will bring their plans to nothing. They will consult the idols and the spirits of the dead, the mediums and the spiritists. I will hand the Mitzrites over to the power of a cruel master, and a fierce king will rule over them declares the Adon, Yahweh of hosts. Now, of course, Mitzrayim is Egypt, and the Mitzrites are, well, of course, the Egyptians. Now, many Vach folk have speculated that this prophecy began to be fulfilled in the Egyptian uprisings during what is known as the Arab Spring. 
friends, you may disagree with me, but I don't think that that's the case. The peak of the uprisings and the onset of Hosni Mubarak's ouster through to al-Sisi's deposing of Mohammed Morsi took place between February of 2011 and July of 2013. Now, two years have passed, and during much of those two years, Egypt was rarely even in the news. But almost to the very day, two years have gone by, and almost to the very day that Morsi was deposed, Egypt is back in the headlines with a vengeance. And I believe that what these recent headlines are reporting is much more specific to Isaiah's prophecy, much more so, not more see, more so, sorry, I couldn't resist that, <laughs> much more so than what took place during Egypt's part in the so-called Arab Spring. Many may disagree, but I believe that Egypt's Arab Spring was only a foreshadow of the actual prophecy, a prophecy that only today, right now, at this time, is being made manifest. Now, let's uh, break the prophecy down a bit. Take a look at the very first sentence. Let's read it. See, Yahweh rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Mitzrayim. Is this passage referring to the Arab Spring? I don't think so. Friends, think about it. Did the Arab Spring ride like a swift cloud into Egypt? Not really. Protests began in four other Middle Eastern countries, Tunisia, Algeria, Jordan, and Oman, before reaching Egypt. Beginning in Tunisia, there was this like domino effect, which served as a bit of an alert to other Middle Eastern nations that trouble could come. When you look at that passage from the prophecy, you get the sense that something is upon you without warning, suddenly. Now what, as recently as just two weeks ago, has ridden like a swift cloud into Egypt? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! You got it. The Islamic State. Now I ask you, my friends... Wouldn't you say that this headline speaks a little more accurately to Isaiah's prophecy than the Arab Spring, which the media actually touted as a positive thing? I'm going with ISIS. Moving on. Now let's take a look at the prophecy's second sentence. Let's read it together. The idols of Mitzrayim tremble before him, and the hearts of the Mitzrites melt with fear. All right. Now, the same commentators who say that the Arab Spring ushered in the fulfillment of Isaiah 19 are the same ones who say the following. They believe that the quote-unquote trembling idols was one ten-inch high statue in a display case at a museum in Manchester, England that was like, discovered to be facing the wrong direction. They say that that's what fulfilled this part of Isaiah 19. Are you kidding? Here is the article and some photographs. Look at that. Now, uh, maybe it's just me, but I don't believe that any Egyptian's heart would melt with fear looking at that. You're telling me that that's the trembling idols? It's one thing there. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's completely irresponsible to whoever compared the prophecy to this. Come on now, do you think Isaiah is writing about something less than a foot tall that isn't even in the country he's prophesying about? If you open up your refrigerator door and you see that the ketchup and the mustard have switched places, you might be puzzled, but I don't believe your heart will melt with fear. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, but that little statue there did not fulfill this part of the prophecy. However, I do believe that... These idols would surely tremble, and the hearts of the people of Egypt would most assuredly melt with fear if, say, this were to occur. <laughs> now that, that's more like it, wouldn't you say? Now go ahead and read that portion of the prophecy with that headline sitting next to it, and I think you'll see what I'm getting at. In fact, Let's read it as if it were one big headline. 
The idols of Mitzrayim tremble before him, and the hearts of the Mitzrites melt with fear as Kuwaiti preacher Isis call for demolition of Egypt's Sphinx pyramids. Hoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> that shoe seems to fit a little bit, doesn't it? Well, we'll see. Time will tell. Now, lastly, let's take a look at Isaiah 19, verse 4. I will hand the Mitzrites over to the power of a cruel master, and a fierce king will rule over them, declares the Adon, Yahweh of hosts. Well, here we go again. That's right. The same folks that spoke of the Arab Spring and the little statue, they claimed that the cruel master slash fierce king written of by Isaiah the prophet was none other than Mohammed Morsi. <laughs> well, right now he's in jail. Obama and the Clintons can't even help him right now. So in light of that, I don't think he's going to be fulfilling any prophecies anytime soon. So who does that leave us with? Aha, Mr. Al Sisi. Now this guy, granted, he is a mystery. Really difficult to peg him down. But unless he is the epitome of a wolf in sheep's clothing, he's been a fairly decent leader for his country. So as of this particular video, I'm not ready to give him the crown of the cruel master slash fierce king either. So in conclusion, I believe that Isaiah 19 is much closer to being fulfilled by the Islamic State by their arrival in Egypt. And yes, they have literally threatened the idols of Egypt, the true idols, that sphinx, those pyramids, <laughs> if they ain't idols, nothing is. And with regard to the cruel master slash fierce king, I believe that Isaiah is actually referring to the coming Antichrist. Now, you may not concur with my, my findings on this here, my friends, but seems to make sense to me. Well, there you go, my friends. I, I hope this video blessed your heart, and I pray that you and yours are well. Blessed by Elohim beyond measure, all the watch folk, the watchmen, the watch ladies, the watch children, and their watch dogs. <laughs> ah. And well, I guess I gotta say it, don't I? Zip, zip, zip. Now you be well. Bum, 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 bum,